The job market is currently the hardest it has ever been. Been. Yet I've been able to land two high paying software engineering positions and I'm far from a coding prodigy or someone who started at a really young age. In this video, I'm going to highlight how to strategically apply and finally land the job. And by the end of the video, if you precisely apply all of the skills that you're learning today, you should be getting about one interview every 25 applications. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. All right, guys, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up my Canva whiteboard right here and let's go ahead and jump right into it. So this is how to actually apply and land high paying software engineering positions in this market. It's currently the hardest it has ever been and applying strategically is going to set you apart from 99% of the job market today. So let's get into it. The first question is, why is this even important? Everyone and their grandma is learning how to code. Not their grandma and their grandkids are learning how to code. You see literal toddlers nowadays making advanced websites. So with every the influx of software engineers, the competition has just skyrocketed because obviously the more people in the space, the more people who are going to be applying to positions. And with that, it's currently the hardest it has ever been to actually land this software engineering job. So now having a strategy is a must have in this space. Back then, people used to apply these types of strategies when applying to FANG roles, but now you need to use these strategies to apply to both FANG and non-FANG. Let's do the first thing is first. We need to assess your current skill level. The biggest reason people aren't landing these software engineering jobs is because they either underestimate their skills or they overestimate your skills. So to get right past that, we're gonna do this skill assessment checklist. You can either screenshot this or write it down in a notepad if you've got one beside you. Whatever the case may be, I'm gonna go ahead and go through it with you as well. Ask yourself these questions. Can I build a simple login slash registration system from scratch? Can I consume a public API and display the data? Oh, I accidentally put date here. Let me fix that actually. Data. Can I explain object-oriented programming, REST APIs, and basic SQL queries? And can I push my projects to GitHub with a readme? Can I write at least basic tests or debug errors without completely giving up? Now, I hope you've answered all of these questions honestly, because this is going to be the baseline of where you need to set your foundations to land a job. This is how to actually score yourself. If you said yes to only one question, you're still a beginner. Focus on fundamentals and pro small projects. If you said yes to two or three questions, you're intermediate. It's time for you to start building some stronger projects and polishing your GitHub and LinkedIn. And if you said yes to four to five questions, you're advanced enough to start applying to positions now. Even if you've said yes to two or three questions, you're still ready to apply to these software engineering jobs but you probably want to use some of the skills, even if at advanced level, you're probably gonna to wanna to use some of the skills that I'm gonna go through in this video to upskill. And if you're still a beginner, I will drop some free resources in the description where you can learn from things like free code camp, etc. So you need to evaluate the job market before you start blindly applying to positions. The reason is, is most people look at job boards like these, look at the skill requirements and then just leave. Or on the other hand, there's people who look at these job boards, see that they're unqualified and just apply anyway. All right, so there's two problems to this. Say you're on this side and you're applying to these software engineering jobs, even though you look at the qualifications and see that you're clearly unqualified. That means that you're going to be getting ghosted and you're going to get a lot of rejections. Or if you're lucky, you might get the interview and then the interviewer sees that you're clearly unskilled enough and then you get rejected on the spot like that. Now, if you're here, you look at the job boards, look at the skill requirements and then leave, you're just setting yourself up in this position where you're demotivated and you no longer even wanna take this coding stuff seriously because you're like, I'm not qualified for this and I don't think I'll ever be qualified for this. So this is what we're gonna do. So we're going to learn these skills, search, for patterns in these job postings. What you should do is get a folder on your laptop or computer and just straight up gather like 30 applications, put them in the folder and then search for patterns because your main goal is gathering everything that you currently know, building on it with the industry standard skills and then building projects around the patterns that you see. 
for example, if we were to go up here, we see it wants JavaScript, TypeScript, React. Okay. And then over here, it says JavaScript, TypeScript, React. We see that this is a common thing that jobs are looking for. So it's probably in our best interest to learn these skills immediately. Let's say you are a front end developer and you're applying to roles like this. This was actually for a client of mine who was a Canadian front end developer. And I was actually doing some job searching, um, job research for her. And we seen here that she was really good with angular, but we need to get her up to date with things like react because a lot of the job postings that I went through seen that we needed react, but at the end of building our projects, well, before we go here, I actually want to talk about for building projects. I'm going to make this short because I have an entire video that I'll link somewhere in here about how to actually build projects that land you software engineering positions. But to go over in just a few sentences, we will look at what type of projects that they're going to have you do on the job and kind of search for patterns. One pattern that I noticed very clearly was they were looking for people who could create scalable web applications that can have a lot of users. So for instance, we'll create something like a website that can, we use the free trial, but we discuss how we could use a premium trial to host and have up to a million users. But I have a whole video on this. I'll link it in the video somewhere. But oops, we're not ready to apply yet. There's a key to all of this that will make us irresistible to the job market. And are you ready for this? It's going to be LinkedIn content. It's not a coincidence that every single tech influencer that we see works at Fang or big tech. It's not a coincidence. They are utilizing something that you are not, and it's creating a presence. That's why myself was able to land some of these software engineering positions is because I had a presence on Instagram. Now I know a lot of people don't want to create content on Instagram, either they're shy or Instagram is just not fully their thing. But if you don't want to use Instagram, LinkedIn is an amazing alternative, if not better. And you can create content easily. So I'm going to go into some of the content ideas that you can create. For example, you can share how you became obsessed with software engineering. What is something that pulled you in? We're going to pull post three unpopular opinions in your field, something like this. I know this might be cringe, but I believe react is better than angular because yada, yada, yada. And here's how I stay up to date with the latest tech trends of the week share some resources, blogs, anything like that. And here's what I learned the hard way in software engineering. Three ways to stand out as a software engineer today. Feel free to screenshot this and use this because this is, these are amazing content ideas that you can just start posting on LinkedIn to increase your presence because it's just gonna make you more hard to ignore an applicant who is consistently posting on LinkedIn, getting likes, etc. So use these content ideas and you should start seeing some more green lights when applying to these positions. And then there's another thing that we're going to get into, which is outreach to recruiters. Now we're going to be outreaching to these recruiters with our LinkedIn content. So we're going to be outreaching on LinkedIn and we also have LinkedIn content. So when recruiters see our page, they also see, wow, this person is taking this coding stuff very seriously. So before you fully apply to a software engineering position, be sure to talk to recruiters and the people who post the actual job application first. Now I'm going to go ahead and share a bunch of templates with you guys. But before I do, I want to talk about some of the benefits that you'll get from this. You get things like just overall networking. What if the, the job op application just isn't open, but you end up meeting a good person who can refer you as soon as a job position opens. So you just have a good network. You can invite them. You guys might even build up a friendship and faster feedback on if you're a good fit or not. You'll be able to message the recruiter or whoever posted the job board with your stats and they'll see, well, is this person a good fit or not? And you'll be able to get and answer quicker. And now finally, hidden opportunities. Now this one is the most important. Sometimes you can apply to these job positions and talk to the recruiter. And when you're talking to the recruiter, they might say, yeah, we don't have something open for this specific position, 
but we have something open for this one. And they give you an, a whole nother opportunity that you didn't even see because not all of the available jobs are going to be posted. So this is a very good opportunity for you to get some of these hidden opportunities. And also recruiters are happy to bring you into the company because they actually get paid a commission for some of the talent that they bring in. So it's a win-win for both sides. You should always be outreaching to recruiters and you can use these messaging templates. This template is to highlight immediate value. Hello, recruiter name. I came across your opening job, your opening for a job title, a company name. In my experience with these skills, technologies, projects, I've helped boom. And I'd love to bring that experience to your team and contribute to whatever their specific goal is. Would you be open to a brief chat? Easy. Two, this one's gonna be focused on alignment and curiosity. I noticed you're posting for job title at company name and your teams work on their specific project, product, initiative really caught my eye. I've been working with whatever skills and technology, and I'm curious about how your team approaches relevant challenge, and I'd love to connect to learn more about the role. Now, I've optimized this because people are starting to catch on to messaging recruiters faster, so I had to create a message that stands out a little bit more. By the way, you guys can just screenshot these or just write them down so that you never forget them. And this one's going to be a short, confident, and polite. So I'm really excited about the job title role at company name with a background and your expertise skills i'm confident i can make an immediate impact i'd love to connect and discuss how my experience aligns with your team's needs thanks for your time and then your name now something that you can do if you're really like that is you can straight up call the recruiters if you see their number and you can just pitch yourself to them just like that. If you're really like that and you got that confidence, you can just straight up call them on the phone and try to sell yourself and say, see why, tell them why you're a good position, why you're a good option for that position. It's a really good idea. Calling them on the phone is definitely better, but sending these recruiter outreach messages are also really nice and they work as well. So next, it's just apply, apply, apply. This is what your weekly schedule should look like when you're applying to these positions. So applying to job postings on Indeed, LinkedIn, um, Glassdoor, etc., and some of these niche websites and angel lists and outreaching to recruiters, posting content on LinkedIn three to five times per week and grinding neat code three to five times per week. I can't talk about how to land a software engineering job and how to apply to software engineering job without talking about grinding neat code three to five times per week, because that's going to be one of the big things that you're going to go through in the interview. So your weekly schedule should be you sending out these job applications, outreaching to recruiters, posting content on LinkedIn three to five times per week, grinding new code three to five times per week, put in, in that work. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to pay off in the end. I were starting out applying for software engineering jobs. This would be the resource I wish I needed. You can get early access to my upcoming ebook, the developer accelerator, where I've packaged everything I've learned over the past four years, landing two software engineering positions and helping many others break into this field into a comprehensive guide that if you followed precisely will help you land more interviews and your first high paying software engineering job. If not your first, you then your next better and higher paying one. Don't miss out. The link is going to be in the description. If you get early access now, you're already going to get a 10% discount. So it's just a win-win. It'll be coming out in about a week. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.